Hi there. Gigabyte just announced its latest Mini ITX offerings based on the new thin Mini ITX form factor. So we have two boards. We have the B75TN and we have the H77TN based on the respective Intel chipset supporting uh, socket 1155 processors from Intel. And these are all based on the thin Mini ATX standard, which as you can see is pretty thin. It's all based on a 2.5 centimeter height limitation for the back panel I.O. here, which also dictates the same level of thinness for everything else on the board. So for example, instead of having regular full length DDR dims, what we've got is two SO, SO dims that lie flat or mounted flat on the board here. You also notice we have a mini PCIe slot here for a network, small mini PCIe network card, which Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, whatever. And you have uh, an MSAR to SSD slot here, which of course is for a space saving yet uh, pretty high performance SSD. And you'll notice that there's no 24 pin uh, standard ATX power plug. What we've got instead is an external power input here with another, another two pins here on the side. So these SATA ports here are actually powered by this SATA power adapter here on the side. We also have three display outputs. So we've got display port HDMI and around the side here, we have an LVDS uh, ribbon connector, which is also backed up by a backlight power here. Now being thin mini ITX, it's of course very, it's a very useful form factor for any kind of industrial commercial uh, display, uh, digital display kind of applications. But the really exciting thing for us is that it's helping to build a new all-in-one PC ecosystem. So now on the market we're find, increasingly finding more and more all-in-one PC uh, chassis such as the one beside me here which supports the new thin mini ITX form factor. If I can just show you how that works by turning around the, the side here, you can see that this in fact is the back panel I.O. of the Gigabyte H77TN motherboard. So let me uh, show you how this all fits together. So here you can see we have the, all the components we need to build our all-in-one PC, including the Gigabyte H77TN motherboard. Next to that you can see the 3.5 inch hard drive, the optical drive, plus uh, our MSATA SSD and mini PCIe modules for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, some DDR3 SO DIMM modules, the cooler, which uh, it also is part of the chassis design, as well as our Intel Core CPU. So the first thing we want to do is install our CPU. So we open the socket, take away the protective cover, and carefully place our CPU in the socket. Now we can install our SO DIMM DDR3 modules. These just click into place like so. Next we have the mini PCIe module. This is uh, uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And then we have our MSATA SSD, which clicks into place in the slot there, which is held in place by two small screws. And there you have it, our motherboard's ready for installation. Uh, next, we need to prep the all-in-one chassis. So the first thing we want to do is remove these screws un the underneath and remove the back panel. So here you can see inside the all-in-one chassis, and you can notice in the bottom left-hand corner that there is a 3.5-inch hard drive bay, and above that there is space for an optical drive. To help us get access, we're going to first of all remove the 3.5-inch bay, and then we're also going to remove this side panel here, which contains additional USB and a card reader. Once that's been removed, we can then insert our thin optical drive. This is a Blu-ray drive. Once again, held in place by a couple of small screws. We can now replace the small side module. Uh, now you can see we have our 3.5 inch hard drive 
installed that's held in place by four small screws and it fits snugly into the corner. And that can be screwed down. Okay, so next you can see the space here for the motherboard. And we have some small risers which, which we, into which we're going to screw the, the motherboard. The first thing we want to do is make sure we get our I.O. shield in there. Now we can mount the board. Four screws, one in each of the four corners of the board. Now we can start to connect all of the devices to the board. Uh, these ones in the top right hand corner are for the touch screen. And here we have the data cables for our SATA drives. We have our regular front panel pin headers. The power for the SATA drives comes directly from the board. So here we have our SATA cable. Which connects up like so. So you can see the drives are installed. Next we want to install the CPU cooler, which is a special design specifically for this chassis. As you can see, it's joined by a, a, lo a long copper pipe to a grill outside, which is also cooled by a fan, which will blow the, the warm air out of the chassis. Make sure everything's all tied up neatly, neat cabling as, as much as possible. And there we have it. We're ready to put the back panel back on. Screw that in place and we're just about done. Here we have our DIY all-in-one PC. So there you have it folks, you now have the opportunity to put together your very own DIY all-in-one PC. Thanks for joining us, goodbye.